Getty sanctions could make Kim Jong-un to decide he had nothing to lose, Mr. Death Thomas warned as Secretary of State Rex Tillerson told an event at Stanford University early this month that the rogue nation was really starting to hurt as a result of the measures, which are aimed at denying it the raw material it needs to carry on with its nuclear weapons program. And Joseph Death Thomas, a former U.S. ambassador and authority on North Korean affairs, agrees, but with some caveats. Mr. Death Thomas, a regular contributor to the 38 North website which monitors North Korean activities, said, in an economic sense, he is correct. It appears that the sanctions are reducing North Korea's exports of sanctioned commodities like coal and minerals, this will negatively affect the regime's supply of hard currency and it will hurt the DPRK, GETTY, UN Secretary of State addresses the event at Stanford. This does not mean the sanctions are causing the regime to change policy. During his speech, Mr. Tillerson cited anecdotal evidence suggesting the pressure the regime was feeling, but Mr. Death almost said China was the best place to look for compelling proof. He said, since the overwhelming bulk of North Korea's trade is with China, the place to look is Chinese trade statistics. This is the best source of data. These statistics do seem to show a significant drop-off in exports. The other place to look is on any reporting from China, Russia or the Middle East on the replacement of North Korean workers. Mr. Death Thomas sounded a note of caution about the often stated hope that the sanctions would eventually force Kim to agree to talks aimed at persuading him to abandon North Korea's efforts to develop nuclear weapons. He said, the objective of the sanctions is to put so much pain on the North Korean elite that Kim will be forced either to change policy and negotiate or to face an internal revolt of the elite. However, the regime might make other choices either to suppress dissent or to transfer resources from non-elites to the elites and allow the general population to face the pain of sanctions. Sunday, January 7, 2018 Moreover, it is possible that if the regime were to be faced with collapse it might choose to go out in a blaze of glory. North Korea expert Joseph Death Thomas, moreover, it is possible that if the regime were to be faced with collapse it might choose to go out in a blaze of glory. Nevertheless, the premise of the pressure campaign is that the DPRK would prefer negotiation to collapse. This is not irrational, but it is not a sure thing. During the Stanford event, Mr. Tillerson had said he had had no direct communication with Kim, and while Mr. Death Thomas acknowledged that this very almost certainly the case, he added, other individuals would be more likely to have communicated in both governments, at least prior to the beginning of this year. Government-to-government -government communication was somewhat limited largely due to an unwillingness of the DPRK to engage. I would not read too much into the statement about the absence of communication to Kim. Perhaps a more interesting question would be has the United States government communicated directly with the North Korean government has the North Korean government responded substantively the problem is I don't know the answer to those two questions.